Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb, come fly with AOPA. This week we whisk you away to a California fly-in winery and vineyard, bring you an early analysis of a fatal Florida accident, and show you a pretty cool tool to help with oil changes. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Let's catch up with AOPA content producer Alicia Heron as she takes us into Halter Ranch. That's a California fly-in winery and vineyard. Halter Ranch is a fly-in winery located on California's central coast, about halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco. This private 3,353 foot by 25 foot strip is nestled between grapevine covered rolling hills. The approach here is a treat, and with the narrow 25 foot runway and surrounding terrain, it's just a little bit more of a challenge than a typical field. Right after we touched down, Gracie Nino and Kristen Troxell greeted us and they took us around the airfield and past olive groves to the two recently opened pilot cottages. The pilot cottages are nestled among trees and the area is so secluded and peaceful it was hard to believe the runway was only a few hundred yards away. And they don't feel like a hotel or Airbnb, more like a guest room at your stylish best friend's house where you feel instantly at home. And since the pilot cottages are only available to pilots, that makes them feel even more special. We've had higher than average rainfall recently in California, so it was extra beautiful to fly in, and it was extra green. California's central coast has lovely rolling hills and valleys that are typical of wine regions across the world. The morning after flying in, we headed over to the tasting room for a tour with winemaker Kevin Sass. He walked us through the different stages of winemaking, showed us the cellars, and took us through the wine caves. After that, we had a wine flight and lunch with a great view of the runway. Halter Ranch prides itself on sustainability, and the greens for the restaurant come from the Jardin du Chef, which is carefully cultivated on property. You can really taste the farm-to-table freshness, and paired with wine made right there and seeing the airplane in the distance created a really special moment. The tour of the ranch with Timothy Argy was another highlight. You get a small taste of the expansive property on the multi-hour tour, and you have a great time. One of my favorite parts was going to an elevated ridge and looking down on the property. We also were able to stop under an umbrella for a glass of wine, which felt very special. Any place where you can fly in and instantly be at your destination, whether it's a vineyard like this or a campsite somewhere else or even an air show or a fly-in, is such a treat and really highlights what the travel side of GA does best. Brings you to fun places in a way that enhances your experience. I highly recommend this experience to other pilots, whether you're looking to grab a good meal, or enjoy wine tasting and spend the night, or just enjoy a more challenging than normal field. This is definitely a place I would visit again. Hey, Alicia, thanks for joining us. So that looked like a really cool trip. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what pilots need to do to safely fly into Halter Ranch? Yeah, absolutely. I had such a great time on this trip. It was so fun. Uh, to go to an airport I had never been to before, and especially one that's a little bit more challenging. So Halter Ranch is 3,400 feet long. There's a little bit of slope. You could probably see that terrain around us um, in, in the video on landing and those trees at the end of the runway. So when you're going in there, oh, and most importantly, it's only 25 feet wide. So when you're going in there, you really need to have good airspeed control because there isn't that extra room uh, to land far down the runway or to get rid of that energy with a longer runway. And you're also going to need to have really good center line control. On the day that we went in there, it wasn't uh, windy at all. So crosswind wasn't really a, a factor, but on a day with a crosswind there, you would really need to have that rudder control under control because the runway actually is narrower than the wingspan of most aircraft. The other thing is that when you're going to a place like Halter Ranch, you're probably not gonna be going in there solo. So if you haven't flown with passengers in a while, or if you haven't flown with luggage in a while, go do one of those flights at your home airport first. Remember what it's like to fly with a slightly heavier aircraft. And again, since there's not services there, you'll probably have a little more fuel as, as well. So practice flying heavier before you go in there and are trying to nail that landing. I know you'll have a great time flying in there. And of course, if it ever gets weird, or you feel uncomfortable, you can go around, try again, or even divert to nearby Paso Robles, which is only, once you land there, it's only about a 20 or 30 minute drive to Halter Ranch. So you're by no means committed to, to landing there if it starts to get strange on you. 
Um, and there's obviously diversion options, but it's, it's a wonderful place. I highly recommend a visit uh, for California pilots, even if it's a day trip where you go have some lunch, maybe pick up some wine, but even if you don't drink it, their food is really, really good. And, it, and it's worth a trip just for the fun of landing at that airport. So it's definitely worth checking out. Awesome. And hey, thanks for pointing out Pasta Robles nearby. So that way, you know, pilots of any experience level can go and easily uh, get to the ranch and have a, you know, fun little getaway if they want. Okay, well, three uh, AOPA initiatives I wanted to catch you up on this week. The first is that the AOPA Air Safety Institute has released a new early analysis, and it's of a fatal accident in Florida at Piper Lance. AOPA Air Safety Institute Senior Vice President Richard McSpadden takes a look at the NTSB's preliminary report, breaks down the accident, and shares lessons that we can all learn from it. The Piper Lance was returning to St. Petersburg, Florida with four people aboard. It departed runway 23, climbed to about 300 feet, and then began a right-hand turn and continued that right-hand turn decelerating or accelerating with a descent into the Gulf of Mexico and crashed. All four people aboard perished. And off of runway 23 is into the Gulf of Mexico. On a dark night, that's what's called a black hole departure. That kind of black hole departure has been a problem before, not just at Venice, but it can be a problem anywhere where you're taking off over the water, over dark desert terrain, really over anywhere where there's no good visual acuity where there's no good visual landmarks, so you're taking off and you lose all kind of depth perception and any kind of visual indications of your, of your flight parameters. So on a black hole type departure, think of it as like your, your IFR or your IMC, because in effect you are. You have no really visual acuity or no really visual signs to help you with your spatial orientation. So be ready to transition to instruments rapidly and consider it like a, a, a IFR departure. And try to stay straight and level on your climb out as long as possible, at least up to about 1,000 feet or so, before you begin a turn and you're fully transitioned onto instruments. You can watch Richard's full early analysis on the AOPA Air Safety Institute's YouTube channel. Just click on the card in the upper right of your screen. A bill has been introduced in the House of Representatives. It's to form the National Center for the Advancement of Aviation. And what it would do would help um, inspire collaboration between civil and military aviation aerospace sectors and also focus on introducing aviation STEM curriculum to middle school and high schools, scholarships, training opportunities, apprenticeships, mentorships, and even support for veterans um, who are going to be changing from a military career to a civilian career. Now, a similar bill was passed in the House last year, and it didn't go anywhere in the Senate. So what AOPA is working on doing this year is getting it added and included into the FAA reauthorization bill that's going to be introduced later um, this year. All right, on the AOPA Foundation's You Can Fly front, a big congratulations to Stuart Bailey. So Stewart is being honored with the inaugural Texas Aviation Educator of the Year Award. That's from the Texas Department of Transportation Aviation Division. Stewart is building an aviation program at ELSIC High School, and he's teaching the AOPA Foundation's uh, high school STEM curriculum in the 10th and 11th grades. So here's some important news you need to know this week. One of those is if you're looking for a way to use your airplane to help others, Freedom Aviation Network has launched and they've conducted 20 flights and what they have formed to do is to help transport survivors of human trafficking and their advocates. So survivors of human trafficking reported that transportation out of their situation was one of the major barriers uh, for them being able to escape. So if you're interested in learning more about this network, uh, or working with them, you can check out the link in the description below. Our full story is on AOPA.org, and we're also going to include a link below to the organization. Well, it is definitely spring, closing in on summer, and if you're ready to take your airplane out of hibernation and start kicking off the flying season, make sure you give it a little extra TLC. So that can include things like checking your tire pressure, making sure that you really sump your fuel tanks well so that there's no water in there, 
check your battery, make sure that it's at a good level. And something else that might be in store is an oil change. And if you're gonna be doing that, AOPA Editor-at-Large Dave Hirschman has a pretty cool tool that he's gonna show us that can make oil changes a lot less messy. I'm uh, Dave Hirschman, AOPA Media. I'm definitely not a mechanic. And I'm in the midst of an oil change, and I'm doing it on a white shirt because I'm testing this new product from Anti-Splat Technology that promises to make oil changes, particularly those with a horizontally mounted oil filter like this RV4 has, into a much cleaner affairs. And what this is, it looks like a, like a vaping cartridge. On one end, it's got a fitting for an air compressor, and on the other, it's meant to puncture the, uh, the oil filter itself. So uh, I'm gonna give it a shot here, and we'll see if I can keep this shirt clean during the, uh, the process. So I got a hammer and I've got the tool and I'm getting ready to just whack it into the side of this oil filter. Now I'm gonna get this air fitting and blow shop air through. So now I'm just gonna take, take this tool out. I'm just gonna plug that hole with a piece of tape. Use this wrench to remove the filter. Okay, so here's the, this is the filter that came off. You know, it's it's remarkably clean and usually it would be full of, of oil. So you can see that this, this uh, anti-splat tool has really blown out all the oil that was in the, uh, in the oil filter. And usually after an oil change, you'd have a substantial amount. Maybe this oil filter would be about half full. In this case, it's totally empty. And uh, you now really the, uh, the, my shirt's still clean and you know, this, uh, this, this seems to have been a success. The first time I've done a really, really clean oil change without a bunch of uh, oil left on the floor. Carlo, what do you think? Would you, 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 does this look all right to you? Well, this looks like a totally clean installation. Yeah. Good well, on you, Dave. That's yeah, a great job. Carl. And I appreciate it. Now, if you're wondering if any of the particles might get blown into the engine using that anti-splat tool, uh, we talked with Dave and he said that um, it's actually not enough pressure blowing through to blow any particles through. It should get caught in the media filter. However, if anything would happen to somehow escape, then it's going to drain out with the uh, oil coming out through the quick drain valve. So shouldn't be a worry of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all our latest videos. And this week, we leave you with some flying footage from Robert and Diane Solimasi. It's kind of part two of the, their flying that we've seen before. This time, we're featuring their trip over Bryce Canyon, Utah and Monument Valley, Arizona. Be sure to send in your favorite flying videos at the link in the description. You just might see them on an upcoming show. And as always, if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click the link at the end of the video to learn more about our trial membership.